What's going on bringers? Uh, welcome to your 30 second Android tutorial and now what we're going to get into is touch events because yeah we can draw to our canvas that's all neat and everything but we want some user interaction where they can touch it uh, touch the canvas somewhere or the screen and then we'll draw like a you know our little blue ball or something or change actually the position of our x value and our y value and just in case you guys are just now following along within our main activity we want to have this implements on touch listener because that's going to allow us to process the touch events and all that good stuff and once we implement it it creates this method for us called on touch kind of like on click um, and that's where we're going to and that's where we're going to allow our application to process those events get the values of where it was touched and all that good stuff Oh, and also before we get into this, just to show you guys, actually I probably won't, uh, you know, show you anything, but uh, our canvas is already redrawing itself. That's kind of why we have this thread. It's going through this, you know, this loop here because we set up this while value. While is okay, it's true, and our surface is, you know, um, good to go. We're just going to go through this cycle. So we could just say like x equals x plus 1 or x plus equals one or something like that and you know that will just add one to our value and we'll get some sort of animation so it's already checking uh, you know processing our canvas redrawing it that's the loop that we're gonna have and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go within this on touch method and we get passed in some things we get passed in a view and get passed in an event motion which we called me and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our x value to equal basically wherever they touched uh, on our screen so we're gonna say uh, me dot uh, get X and as you can see it returns a float so that's why we defined our X value as a float instead of an int uh, when we set up these values again this me is our motion event so once our screen is touched it's gonna give us some information and we have a method called get X we also have a method called get y, so let's do that, me equals dot get y. And uh, now let's just check this out, see what we got going here. So go into our surface view class, and once we click, as you can see your bitmap gets drawn in the center of wherever we click. Um, you know, pretty cool, pretty simple. All we're doing is within our touch event, we're changing the x value to wherever the the touch event occurred and we're setting our x value equal to the x of that touch event and our y value to the y of the touch event and again um, the reason it's showing up in the center of where we click is because within our canvas drawing we minus half the width of the bitmap so if you guys want you can uh, you know delete this part of code and you can delete this part of code and then you'll see it will be you know it won't look like it's appearing where we're touching so that's what kind of why we did that in the previous tutorial but let's get a little bit more specific because there's some other things that we can do with a touch event we can get right when the person touches when they drag when they release we can process all of those events so let's just get into that show you guys how to do that as well we're gonna set up a quick switching case for a motion event so we're gonna say switch and we're gonna grab again the motion event which we called me we're going to say dot get action and there's a few different actions that we can process like I was saying the when they touch down and when they release so those are going to be basically our cases so we're going to say case and then we're going to refer to the motion event class so we're going to say motion event and then we can say dot and we have all these different things that we can do uh, which we might get into uh, later, but the ones that we're going to show for now is the action down. So that could be one of one of the things that could happen within this switching case. And we're just going to add a break statement, and we'll define it later. And there's also you know the case motion event uh, dot action uh, action up as well. So I'm just going to go here and uh, then add a break. And let's say there's also a drag as well. So motion event uh, dot uh, t -t 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 move. We'll say move. 
So that's kind of the dragging while they're like moving around. Um, and I'll just quickly just to show you guys, we're just going to cut this here. Uh, we're going to cut this line of code because we kind of already know what that does. Um, again, I just click, I'm dragging, nothing happens, and I release here. So that's basically the same as just pasting this line of code here. Uh, let me run it and clip the video so you guys can see what's going on. So once we go into our class, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, once we click, it appears, it processes that motion event, says, hey, we're just looking for the action down within this case as well. So let's just paste this within our action up and see what happens there. And also one other thing we have to do uh, before we run this in order for it to work is we need to also change this return to a true uh, because otherwise, it's going to go through, it's going to get like this first, hey, hey, this action down happened, break the switch in case, and it, we return to false, and it's like, okay, I'm pretty much done with this on touch method. When we return true, it's still going to, you know, look for all these actions, whether it be action down and action up, um, and it'll kind of, you know, not necessarily do a loop, but it will process more than one of these handling events. So let's just run it now after we turn that to true and we also have our x and y values set up here so now when we go we hit action down and it creates our x and y value that we have over there I'm still holding my mouse down but uh, once we release it's gonna call the action um, or the motion event action up and then it will set our x and y values once it hits this case of action up so then we get a new ball here when we release so again we have this and then this and you guys can probably already guess what this is going to uh, do this action move it's basically going to consistently update it um, so now when we save and run our application it should drag along with us as we're uh, moving our our touch event our motion event I should say um, so we're going to go in here and as you can see I'm dragging and the ball is following along because it's calling this motion event move and it's resetting our X and our Y values and then wherever we release it just uh, you know keeps it there um, so that's kind of an introduction of motion events or touch events um, that use motion events to kind of handle our information here so uh, nothing too sweet but also another thing that you guys might want to do uh, if you guys end up developing a lot of these touch events is it's handling a lot of data right now it's trying to update everything as quickly as possible and we don't necessarily need that because again we're returning true so it's trying to process everything every time there's a new motion event so it's going through the switching case a ton of times so that might hold us up so what we're going to do is just create a quick sleep method um, within our touch event so you know each time it gets called we're gonna let it sleep a little bit and then be like hey figure out what events going on right now um, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna say say thread um, dot sleep nothing new here let's let it sleep 20 times per second but that's a lot better than you know trying to update as fast as it can so again when we use this method we have to surround it with a try and catch if we just hover over here we have this try and catch here adds it for us uh, prints to the stack trace you know kind of basic stuff there but now we have a sleep um, you know a little sleep clause in there and it'll just help us out a little bit more um, and that's pretty much it I believe for what I'm gonna do with this surface view uh, but uh, the next tutorial, I'll probably go over everything again, why we set up a thread, and you know, just kind of review everything. So you guys feel free to skip the next tutorial, but if you're still a little bit lost on what we've done, um, make sure you check out the next tutorial. So thanks again for watching, guys, and subscribing, giving thumbs up, all that good support you guys do. Uh, and I'll catch you guys then. Have a good one.